So guys, I've been waiting to do this interview for a while, waiting for the right time. And the player actually made it easy for me uh, by achieving things that he has always wanted to achieve, of course, and finally getting a great season on this belt. He's had other seasons on this belt too, but not to this extent where he was stopping the standings as the four day top run scorer. So I had to get him on the show, I had to talk to him. You know, he's a friend of the channel. He's been on shows plenty of times before, and I really want to make this um, about him and really get to, into his, his mentality, his mindset, what went well for him this season and his journey so far up till this point. So this is an interview exclusive with Matthew Gretzky after this amazing season that he's had um, for the Warriors. And we're going to do this live exclusively, obviously, on Cricket Fanatics magazine. If we have time after the interview, we will dig into the, the game that's obviously happening as well. Uh, we'll be chatting about that at the end of the show. But first and foremost, guys, there's a couple of things that I'd love you guys to please do. And that is, please, first and foremost, if that button's red, please click it. Subscribe to the channel. Click that notification bell for all future videos as well. And then I'd also like you guys to please download the latest issue of Cricket Fanatics magazine monthly. Every issue is 100% free. Straight to your inbox every month. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. And if you want to help us promote and grow South African cricket, then please become a patron today. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. There are plenty of tiers for you to look at. If you're a business, there are tiers for you. If you are just a regular fan and just want to get exclusive content and also want to just help us out as well as help promote South African cricket, then please become a patron. All the instructions are there. You also get exclusive access to our WhatsApp group that we have only for patrons. So please get involved with that as well. Also smash a like on the video as well as comment and share and go to clickerfanaticsmag.com for all your regular updates. Now, this is also an opportunity for you guys to ask Matthew some questions as well. So after I'm done with what I'm doing and going to bring a guest to ask him some questions as well, and then we'll get into your live chats. So please keep your questions for later on in the show. We'd really like you to ask him some questions as well. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. I'm looking forward to chatting to Matthew, of course, and to you guys too. <laughs> A very good evening and welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. This is your daily show. I'm your host, Khalid Mohidin, and today I'm joined by Matthew Bredsky. Now, I don't really have to really introduce him to you guys. You guys been talking him up in the chat quite a bit on a couple of shows. First and foremost, welcome back, Matthew. How are you doing, bro? Lekker, bro. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, it's different waking up on a Monday and not having to go to practice, but uh, all is good. It's good to have a break. Yeah, so let's get into your season. I mean, we've had you on the channel before. You've always been quite clear to me on where you want to be in life with regards to your cricket. And you couldn't have had a, a better season in the four-day campaign. I mean, it's obviously the ultimate format. Everybody's trying to push for that, um, for test positions, etc. From your perspective, this season, um, just talk me through it. Um, and uh, what were some of the difficulties that you maybe faced or had to overcome in the beginning or in in the middle, in the end, um, just talk me through your season. Yeah, look, it's it's obviously been a new season for me coming in the middle order. I think that's a first for me in my sort of five-year professional career. And um, to be honest, I've loved it. Uh, it's been, even in the white ball stuff, I've loved it. I felt, you know, that's probably my, my batting position. Um, and yeah, it's been, look, it's always, it's always tough batting at St. George's. So there's always those challenges you're playing on those type of wickets where you can't always be as fluent as you know for instance playing in the half fault but to be honest it's grown my game a hell of a lot playing on these wickets um but yeah like i said it's just it's been an awesome season i've got the backing from the coaches and stuff so yeah it's it was always coming i think um but just maturing and and getting a little bit more experience i got the the big numbers on the board so I know you personally as a top order batter the entire time that I know you. Um, was it difficult for you when that conversation happened? Um, or did you just say, you know what, coach, I'll bat wherever you want me to do that? Yeah, I think, to be honest, Robbie had 
had that in mind last season as well, but he was just struggling to fit me in in the middle order. There were a couple other batters there, but to be honest, I was when he told me, I was just like, I don't mind, I'll bat wherever. Um, and I knew my game was good enough to come in in the middle order and, and sort of play the spin role and read the situation well. So it wasn't, I wasn't hesitant at all. Um, and yeah, like I said, I've, been, I've really enjoyed it. So from a mindset perspective on changing that mentality, obviously when you're batting against the new ball generally or in the top order, you, you're generally going to be facing obviously the new ball a lot more often than maybe in the middle order sometimes. But was was there a mentality shift that you needed to go through or did you just go into the season saying, okay, I'm going to take this one game as, as at the time? Yeah, I think like you say at the end, there's just taking it one game at a time. Um, it, mentality wise, yeah, there's a bit of different, you know, you've got to, you're not facing the newborn now, so the, the fielders are quite close. They're bowling a lot straighter these days and, to be honest, mentality, not really. I actually enjoyed having a little bit of a break after fielding and then, you know, regathering my thoughts and, and what I need to do. And I just took that responsibility on me. I mean, number four, number five position in four-day or test uh, test match cricket is probably one of the most important roles. So I just took that on me and, um, yeah, it worked. So hopefully I can carry on working. So, I mean, over 700 runs, three centuries, etc., um, a brilliant season for you. Um, someone asked in the comments of the uh, what is actually the the best innings for you during during this um, the season. Um, I'll probably have to say the the one against the Lions. Just looking at that bowling attack with three pro tiers bowling mm -hmm. four actually um, on a wondrous wicket that was probably not so easy. But yeah, it's it's hard to single it out because all three of those hundreds were on tricky wickets where I had to graft quite hard. So they're all pretty special. But I have to say, the one against the Lions was was pretty special. Facing KG, Vian, Luto, Bjorn, uh, Malusi is also a seriously good bowler. So yeah. Now that's what I want to ask you next is about the wickets in South Africa. Things have changed a lot from my um, the way I've looked at it um, over the years that I've come into journalism, etc. Certain wickets had a certain way to play on it. You know, it played in certain ways. You had certain ones that are spinning wickets, certain ones that are maybe a little bit more bounce on them. But from my perspective, when I've looked at all the different grounds, it seems like they've changed a lot over the last couple of seasons. Um, or years. Am, am I right in saying that? And how do you adapt to conditions? You personally are, are you a person that goes and looks at the wicket and then plays according to conditions, or do you have a certain game plan that you just have to stick to, um, no matter who the opponents are? No, I definitely don't have a certain game plan that I stick to. I, I definitely play conditions. I think that's that's important, and I think for all South African batters, it's important to play conditions because we go all over the world and sometimes we can be stuck in our mentality to stay to a certain game plan where actually on certain wickets, you've got to have certain game plans. So, yeah, the, the wickets have changed. I think the one specific is Wanderers who has been pace bounced all over the years and now it's starting to turn a bit, keep low, um, still nipping a lot, but... Yeah, so that was uh, the wickets are definitely changing. A, a wicket like St George's in White Bull cricket has started to go, get a lot more better. Um, but like I say, it's for me. I honestly just play conditions. There's no specific game plan, um, and yeah, that's that's what works for me. I need to ask you a little bit more about the coaching staff at uh, at the Warriors. Um, we know personally about obviously Bakes as well. That has had big, big influence I've heard on, on a lot of players over the last couple of years, as well as Robbie P. So, I mean, now that you've had a couple of seasons with Robbie, now you get to know him better. What stood out to you about the particularly the two of them? You can maybe start with um, Robbie and then move on to to Bakes. I think yeah, Robbie's been unreal this season. To be honest, he's I think the the one thing with Robbie is the way he makes you feel and the way he makes you can believe in in yourself. Uh, just to go and play, I mean, he's he's someone that if you're on five in a four day game and you try hitting the guy over the top, he probably won't be too bleak. He'll he'll encourage that, which is 
it's quite refreshing to be around. Um, so, and to be honest, he's just like a genius when it comes to thinking about cricket. Like he, he studies the game. He's, he's always thinking about the game. So he knows a lot about the game and he helps all the guys improve their, their knowledge of the game and just backing the guys. And then Bakes is exactly the same student of the game, always learning hardest work. I know whenever you want extra hits, he's there. He does, he does everything. Um, he's, he's like the, the anchor of our ship. So he, he's also unreal. And I think they complement each other very well. Okay, so I'm going to bring on some help. There's someone that I speak to a lot about you, actually, and about the Warriors play specifically. And she is quite um, clued up on all of this. You might have seen her on Twitter when you do have chances to go on there. I'm going to bring on right now. It's Kelly. Uh, Kelly, welcome to the show as well. Um, That's, I'm going to uh, hand it actually <laughs> at old gray yeah and? so uh, i'm gonna add it over to kelly now oh, kelly you can ask a couple of questions um you can let me know when you're done and uh yeah matthew okay can Maddie, uh, hey thanks got it um congrats on the season matt couldn't be happier for you i watched that hundred at the wonders by the way on pitch vision it's a pity you couldn't score those runs playing at st george's when i was scoring there I always complained about that. Never scored runs when I was scoring. Um, then don't come back, please. Because if that's yeah. the case, then <gasps> no. please, I'm, I'm very superstitious. No, you, you did at Old Grey, but not at, uh, not at St. George's. But you're okay. very young, to be fair. Um, yeah, but that was probably the best one I've seen you, seen you play. I did see some of your others. I also enjoyed the innings you played at St. George's in the, against the Lions, that finishing role when you came in at five. Um, a bit of an unfamiliar position in the white ball, white ball game, the last one of the season. Scored a quick like 30 or 40 odd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was very enjoyable to be honest, yeah. It was, it, I mean, there was a good bowling attack um, and it seemed as though you, you looked very much at home in the middle order. Because I'm used to the flair game of yours from club cricket. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> what's changed, uh, what's, what's changed between... Um, between the, the, the 18, 19 year old Matt, the flair and the talent, to the bit more of a brick wall that you see playing four day cricket now? Sure, oh, that's, a, that's a good question. I think, to be honest, I still have that fight and flair in me. I just feel I uh, know how to control it a little bit more, if that makes sense. Just with age and my understanding of cricket within my life, it's not the be all and end all but it is still the be all but i don't look at it that way I, I sort of just look at it a part of me so that's probably changed i just see the game for what it is and what i need to do and that's what i need to do where in the past it was like i put so much pressure on myself to get a performance and that sometimes clouds your mind a little bit where now i'm just reading it for what it is and what i need to do so yeah are you enjoying enjoying your cricket? Obviously, making runs is obviously enjoyable. But I find, you know, the more you enjoy your game, sometimes the easier it comes. Hundred percent. I think I went over to the UK this previous season, and I sort of found my love for the game a little bit more there. Uh, played with a great bunch of guys, good cricket, some tough wickets, but I found my love for the game a little bit there, and. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it at the moment. Like you say, it's always enjoyable when you're scoring runs. But even when I haven't scored runs this season, I've still enjoy contributing in other ways. So, yeah. Now, you spoke about Robbie Pian being a really good chief this season. Um, he's put a lot of responsibility on very young players' shoulders, looking especially at your batting lineup. Actually, your whole team. And a lot of the time it's come off, especially in four-day crickets with him, him and Bakes, um, I know trying to make sure players aren't pigeonholed, um, trying to bring the best out in you to get you to all play your natural games. Has that, um, and it's another second place finish, <laughs> um, frustratingly. But the way you guys are performing in the, in the, um, in the longer format, which is, is the purest form, the more difficult form, um, is that encouraging for, for a growing group of regulars? Yeah, hundred percent. I think like in our first T20 comp, we did an analysis of like 
all the teams on the amount of caps they had. And I think we were like sitting last in in experience. But Robbie's never made it a, a thing of that's a disadvantage to us. He's always actually made it like it's an advantage. We get to go and play and like enjoy our cricket. So I think it's helped a lot both from Bakes and and Robbie. They give you responsibility no matter how old or how many games you've played and they make you believe you can go to the job. So that's been massive. And I think yeah, finishing second again this year, that's frustrating because, in my opinion, I think we should have won. But it just bodes for something well in the next two years with this with this team and the experience we've gotten under the last two years. And I think personally, you've built a lot of experience into very few caps in your side, if that makes any sense. Yes, 100%. Game, game management from a lot of the younger players is miles ahead of where players of a similar age are. Yeah, and I, and I think another kudos has got to go to Rudy Second. He's like one of our older players in the team, but he's very good with the, the younger guys and passing on knowledge. Um, he's been very good for our team, but mm. yeah, it's like you say, we all very young, but because we've got the caps and the opportunity, we, we starting to get a lot more experience, uh, which is, is positive. Um, yeah, Rudy's a bit of a prodigal son. He was uh, there for a while and then he left. Came back and come back and doing the job now. Yeah, hundred percent. The team environment is it working for you under with with Robbie and Bakes now? Obviously, it's it's a different sort of environment to the one I'm used to being around at the Warriors. You know, back when Russell and AD were there. But is the team environment is 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 it um, you know fairly conducive towards building successful future seasons? You know, keeping players, um, keeping promising players, and you know, not losing them to other provinces? I think so. I think um, the nice thing about the Warriors team at the moment is like the guys are all of similar age. There's a couple of older guys floating around with just a little bit more experience. But if you think about it, well, what we hope will happen is that this group of players in the next two, three years will hit their peak and, and we can win some some competitions and I think that's what Robbie and Bakes are trying to do is is build a young squad and in two, three years keep us all together and hopefully we can win win some trophies. So but yeah it's never easy keeping guys at a province like you know guys move that's the professional sport but hopefully we can keep a large majority of the group going forward now. Yeah. I think the happier the happier the environments or the you know the, the nicer it is to play and also helps a lot. It's a similar recipe to when Russell and AD built that team that won the two white ball trophies. But uh, 13 years ago... Yeah, yeah, no, it it's, makes such a difference. On the field, it makes a hell of a difference if you're happy off it. Yeah. And the last question, how was the SA20 experience? SA, yeah, it was unreal, to be honest. I have no bad things to say about the SA20. It was... It was so cool just to play in front of those crowds and, and, and with the players we played against and that high quality of cricket, that pressure. Um, I thrived on it and I loved it. And yeah, I, I hope I'm a part of it for the next 15 years, to be honest. Well, I, I don't think you'll have a problem landing a team um, next time around with those innings. So. Thank you. Touch wood. Yeah, no, you superstitious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get that superstition out of you, actually. Okay, Kelly, uh, th thanks for coming on. Just wait in the back end before we do our, our preview, if you are still available for that. Thanks a lot for coming on. I have a couple of grabs um, or issues with the SA20 and you. you. It's, I wanted to see you play more. That was my only issue. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah. I also wanted to play more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So let's get into some of the live chats over here. There are a couple of questions for you, Matthew. Um, uh, some people getting irritated that I'm not taking any questions. Um, so let's get into it. Um, there are some statements. I'm going to into the statements. Let's just get into the questions over here. Um, okay. What would you say has been the biggest mind shift, the mind shift change you had to make this season? 
like I said earlier, it's obviously I've changed roles, but to be honest, I was always on the on the verge of doing this. It was just about me maturing as a player, and I think sometimes fans and and people get like agitated with players that don't produce the results that they think they are potential they have the potential to do but you know it's cricket is a game especially as batsmen you mature a lot later some are freaks like mature at 19 20 but i think i was always on the the right track it just it's happening for me now and like i say hopefully i can carry on um but there was no real mindset change i've always backed myself in previous seasons just things haven't Develop the way I wanted the, them to. So, yeah. Anything technical wise is what um, Zadik was? No, nothing technical. Cool. So, let's go to Gaurav. He says, Who is your cricketing idol? Um, I'll probably have to go Virat Kohli, to be honest. It's a cliche one, but more for just the way he bounces back and has that much pressure on him to perform day in and day out. Like, that's something for me is just world class. Awesome. I uh, haven't seen Herman bat this season. What do you think of him? And if you have to pick a couple of young batters who you think are close to being the Proteus, obviously you being one. <laughs> um. Jordan is a seriously good player. I think he's going to play international test cricket for a very long time. Um, he's got the mentality for it. He's got the skill for it. Um, yeah, he's he's a seriously good talent. And I think he will play for the Proteus in the near future. Mm -hmm. DT says, on, on average, would you say you face the moving ball often? And is there a huge gap in quality when facing Proteus bowlers versus the guys who aren't? Yes, I do think I face the moving ball often playing at the coast. I think the batting at St. George is always facing the moving ball. And I wouldn't say there's a massive difference between the Proteus bowlers and domestic bowlers. It's just conditions dictate sometimes how guys bowl, but I will say facing a guy like KG Ravada, he doesn't give you as much as a domestic bowler would give you to score. Um, I wouldn't say there's too much change in lateral movement, but just his constant pressure on one spot, one spot is something why he is the best in the world. Excellent. Um, he also wants to know, what is your mindset when you're on 50? Do you look beyond the 100 or take it as it comes? Uh, sure. To be honest, this season, it's, I've honestly just like looked at where our team is in the position and what needs to be done for the team. And I know that's a cliche professional athlete response, uh, response but like that's honestly been my mindset is like looking where we need to go as a team and then doing that accordingly the, the hundred hasn't really been on my mind unless when i'm in the 90s then i'm thinking about the hundred but to be honest as a batsman i always want to go 150 plus but yeah i've i've ended up not out a couple of times where i've having the opportunity and i've thrown my wicket away a couple of times so but yeah the the, the goal is always to go big big yeah how much cricket how cricket crazy are you do you watch cricket on tv much or often yes yeah i, I watch a lot of cricket i follow a lot of cricket i think about cricket a lot so i'm i'm pretty cricket crazy okay let's move on from there do you get nervous on 50s and 90s you should take care while batting at 90s she said 100 percent. yeah i have to say that yeah i do 100 <laughs> percent. Cool. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, Lawrence uh, wants to know, do you think being in the SA20 DSG environment has taken your game to the next level in terms of learning and taking in advice from the likes of Quentin de Kock, for example? Uh, I think definitely it's, it's helped my game uh, more, but I, I would 
I would say it's motivated me more just to to see where those players are um, in their careers. It's motivated me to be there as well, um, be those you know superstars and stuff. So from that point of view, I think it's it's shown me what the cricket world is, and and it's motivated me a lot. Um, and then yeah, like like you say, just learning from all those guys, it's it's given me a lot of confidence. Mm -hmm. Um, with Keshav's injury being a serious one, we fans would like to know who are the next crop of spinners who can challenge international players. Can you give us some insight into some of the spinners that have maybe hassled you or hassled others in the in the league that maybe they don't know about? I think obviously Bjorn Fertain is the obvious one. Um, I, I can't really think of any. I mean, George Linda, he's played international cricketer. Already, yeah. There's, I think there's there's some work on our spinners, to be honest. Mm -hmm. What is the difference in your in terms of the experience between the SA20 and the M MSL? Oh, it's, it's streaks ahead of the MSL, to be honest. The SA20 was just the professionalism was just out of this world. I think MSL was also unreal, but. The SA20, the professionalism, the way they looked off us, um, just mingling with, you know, six overseas players. Um, and to be honest, the crowds were a lot better than the, the MSO, I think, just due to the marketing uh, perspective of the SA20. So from that perspective, yeah, I think SA20 was just miles ahead of its professionalism. Mm -hmm. Now, on this channel, we talk a lot about strike rotation, etc., and how that can improve your game, obviously, for international level. And Sam wants to know, is that something you're working on um, and getting that consistency? Yeah, always. I think that's, in any format, I think that's probably one of the most important parts of your game. I think Robbie P always talks about, he always talks about Herschel Gibbs, how good he was at that, in just, you know, playing the good ball. Actually, A.B. De Villiers is like, good ball, can you get off strike? I think it takes a lot of pressure off you um, when you do hit a boundary instead of dotting it up for four balls and then hitting a boundary and going at it. 100 strike rate, but if you can get off strike, you, you know, you're going at 120, 130 strike rate. So 100% always working on it. Mm -hmm. Lily has a difficult one to answer. Are you moving away from the, the one is I heard Robbie P saying you were offered contract by big unions. I don't know where he's getting his inside from, but yeah. Yes, oh yes. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm moving. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> cool, that's a good answer. Oh, you could have just played the pub. You have actually <laughs> done very well this season. Do you think this is the best um, form you have been in? Um, probably, yeah. <laughs> probably is. Okay, Matt. Um, thanks a lot for giving me your time and, and coming on the show. I mean, I hope we obviously get more of this in the future. I'll be contacting you just for normal cricket chats as well. Is there anything you want to say about the Proteus currently? Um, what, what's impressed you of them in the new regime? Anything you want to maybe say on Shukri? I know you know him quite well as well. Yeah, I think both white ball and, and test match cricket, I think it's, even though the result didn't go away yesterday, but I think just seeing guys getting rewarded with opportunity that have deserved and putting the numbers in domestic season is it's encouraging and it i mean speaking to the players in the basic scene that excites them as well it gives them something to work for um and then yeah the test side that looks looks like a really solid side at the moment and i think shooks is probably the perfect guy for for change he he won't take any trouble so yeah, it's it's exciting times for for cricket South Africa, and even if results don't go our way all the time, it's I think we've got the right right people in charge to put something successful in the future. Yeah. Two late ones this game in Saudi and then it will be done. Um, Not cool. In your opinion, how can SA grow for their cricket and take it to a level of county cricket is on and well done on the season. Thank you. Um, I think we need to play more four-day cricket, to be honest. I think seven games is not enough. Uh, we need to get at least... We've got to try to get 10 games of, of cricket in. 
Um, just just playing more four day cricket is is probably crucial. Um, and then I th- look, I think our four day cricket is actually not in a bad place. If, if you actually come and watch it, compared to county cricket, it's not way off to be honest. Um, so yeah, so I think I, th- I just think we need to play more four day cricket, and there needs to be more games of, for instance, an SAA versus an SA B team. Um, at the end of the season one game just to see where guys are I think um, but again I think it's it's just more four day cricket you know and finally are you going to the UK and anyway off season yes I'm going to the UK and hopefully there are some leagues that I've entered in the draft that I'll get picked up but if not yeah, I'll be in the UK in Surrey Mm-hmm. Is it difficult for for you guys to get those type of gigs, or is it are they quite open with that? The the club gigs. Yeah, the club gigs, county gigs, etc. Ah, uh, I wouldn't say it's difficult. Obviously, I've got an agent, but with this this team, I'm going to I got contacted directly. Um, I think to be honest, as a South African, getting into all these leagues and stuff, it's a lot harder than an English person or Australian person. I feel like. People don't look at South Africans as much as they do as Australians or English people. So, yeah, I think we're getting there. I think with this SA20, the leagues will open more to the SA players. But in in the past, it's definitely been a struggle for for guys to get into leagues and, and stuff like that. Matt's always a pleasure chatting to you. Um, thank you for coming on and, and having a conversation with us. Um, and I hope I'll get you on very, very soon to chat more cricket. And good luck for the new season as well and any other cricket that you'll be playing in the rest of the year. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah. Chat to you soon, bro. Cheers, bro. See you. Bye. Cool. So let's get into a little bit of a preview for tomorrow's game. Um, I think I'm going to bring Kelly back on again. Um, let's do... <laughs> okay. Let me just remove her until she's ready. Um and then we'll get into some of the talk about this particular game uh, that's happening obviously tomorrow at 10 o'clock so um we do know that it's a new squad basically just with additives um this is added players into it um this is the squad that was released um and we obviously know with 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 Kesha that the praise was brought in but this is an opportunity for them to either go with Kelly, I want to ask you this question, actually. This is a chance for them to actually get either play the same team with the same debutants that they gave an opportunity to, or to play the 11 that they think is their best 11. We obviously heard what Sean Pollock said about they needed to play their best team so that they can get momentum into the Netherlands games and then into the World Cup. What's your thoughts on the lineup? Who do you think we should go with, um, particularly in the batting department? Look, I think it's a tough one because they would have obviously they would have had the initial squad with the younger players um, and the new players for two games, and they didn't get those two games. They only got the one game. So it's 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 very it's very unfortunate to for that to be the um, you know the marker that they have to set. But I can't see them going in cold. To the Netherlands series, so I'm fairly sure that you'll see the likes of um, uh, David Miller playing and um, Aiden Markram. Um, they'll probably bring some of the bowlers back, even though Gerald was Gerald was quite good. Um, they'll probably bring some of the bowlers back. Um, they're playing in pots, I believe, this time. Mm, I'm not actually sure. I think it is, yes. Uh, so I'm not sure what, what bowling uh, combination I'll go with. But um, yeah, flat it might flat, be, yeah, it, yeah I might, might see, it is flat, flat. <laughs> um, so, you know, you might see, you might see them maybe go with one of the, you know, newer players as opposed to, you know, both uh, Klaassen and Miller, for example. These, this game doesn't count for, for points. They can experiment. So they might go for something, 
you know, something in the middle, not quite our best um, side on the numbers going into the Netherlands, but I just think that the first game being rained out um, sort of puts you in a tough spot because you don't really get to see um, much from the from those new players that have been added to the side. Yeah. And that's my, my one worry is that we were unlucky that the fact that the first game rained out now what do they do it's, it's going to be very interesting um what they're going to do i mean is it necessary for them to play an extra spinner i don't i don't think so in this particular game no so, i don't think so either. do you go with bjorn or do you go with do you go with bjorn or do you go with the braze well what do you do in that situation i would not go for with the braze as the only spinner though i don't think so not not in that ground. I don't I don't think it's yeah. okay, it, it's quite flat. Um it's 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 a venue beyond maybe more used to playing at for the Lions and for Kauteng. And um he's Probably better at playing a holding role, even though um, all things considered, to raise and bowl badly, it was expensive, but not diabolically expensive given that total in East London. But I just think if 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 we're playing the one spin out, go beyond. There's always Aiden can always turn his arm over as well. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I mean, Bjorn for me is the number is the number one spinner that should replace um, someone like Keshav now that he's missing. I think he's going like like Lawrence says in the, in the comments here. His control is amazing. He also strikes very early. He puts the the, the opposition in a strong or the cut. He's yeah. been in a good position and opposition on the back foot as well. Let's get your final thoughts, Kelly, on this game. Um, how does how does South Africa approach it, um, etc. What's your final thoughts on on the match tomorrow? It's an odd one because. I think our, our, you know, first choice guys are more or less settled. I, I don't think that, um, you know, maybe continuing to rest one of them would be a massive, a massive loss in terms of game time. They're coming off an extended SA20 as well. There's been quite a lot of crickets. Um, but I'd also like to see the you know, see more of the newer players. I don't really like the idea of giving, you know, three players or four players a debut and then dropping them all, you know, the next game. Okay, you can definitely understand why they would do it because mm. they're not part of necessarily part of our first choice 11, but I'd still like to see some of them involved. Okay, Kelly. Um, I'll talk to you again maybe after the the game um, on a review. Thanks a lot for joining the the conversation as well as the interview with Piretsky as well. I needed you on that because you obviously know him uh, a lot longer than I do. But thanks a lot for coming on the show, and I'll chat to you soon. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks. See you. Okay, so we got some insight from Kelly as well. I'm just going to go through some of your chats and see what you guys have had to say. Uh, don't see them dropping the brace against the uh, Netherlands. He can be a trump card. Um, George Linda is a good option for the Netherlands, says Sam. Um, I want to see Quentin the Cock mentality while batting first. He can't become too aggressive while chasing big target. I would actually give Tony Rizzozzi another go tomorrow. I did say Dix was ahead between the two. But Tony does look more confident between the two at the moment. He also looks a lot more settled than, than Ryan does at the moment, in my opinion. Um, Tony's game just looks a lot more, at the international level, he looks a lot more comfortable at the crease and less, um, I would say, less nervous at the crease. Now, we'll have to wait and see what's happening um, with Ryan. I don't think it's necessarily a technical issue. I think it's got to do with a, maybe a shift in mindset, maybe. Uh, maybe being a little bit more patient for the bad balls to hit away rather than going after certain deliveries that maybe can't hit to the boundary. So that's something also that needs to be looked at, I think. I would like to see them play with seven batters for once, trusting Aiden and maybe Stubbs, Ariza for 10 overs just to see how that works. If he is fully fit, I mean, he was uh, sick or injured in the in the match, um, in the first two 
for the for the second match. So um, I hope that he is fully recovered. DT says he would like to see Lazard have a shot and Bjorn again. Lazard is someone that I thought would have been selected in that match. They've opted for maybe for Jero Gutsia and they opted for Lundin Gidi and 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 of course um, uh, Marco Janssen as a, as a seamers. Um, obviously Marco in the all rounder position. So I would like to see what Lazard can do. And I'm sure Rob would want to see that too. You want um say that out. Ryan technique looks uh, unsuitable for international cricket. I don't know if it's unsuitable for international cricket. I just think it's his a, a, a mental game thing for him. I think he's used to playing quite attacking in domestic cricket. Um and, and going playing with confidence and 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 hitting those bad balls that he often gets. But in international cricket, you don't get as many. So I think he just needs to find a little bit more patience at the crease and trust his game, but also be a little bit more patient, maybe adapted according to the conditions. Um, do you think Ryan will still be in the plans after the World Cup? Hopefully he doesn't get forgotten. I don't think he will be forgotten. Um, I do think that they they believe that there's a play in there that and a, and a player with a good mentality. Um, would love to see CC before he goes to the IPL. Me too. Uh, the news about Bresky was broken by on Gamma on IL. It was it was said by uh, Robbie P. Ah, uh, okay. I didn't see on Gamma's um, article on on IRL yet. He didn't send it to me. The bugger. You must send it to me. Khalid, a huge opportunity for Bjorn. He might be our number one spinner in the World Cup, especially with Shamo being inconsistent. One hundred percent. I still do believe that uh, Shamo has an X factor in him, being a risk spinner and all. But um, I think two spinners will probably be favoured in the World Cup, so I think I can see both of them playing as well. But Bjorn, like I've said on many occasions, his mentality is the thing that stands out to me. His attitude and mentality. He doesn't shy away from pressure, and he doesn't shy away from difficult situations. And he always seems to strike and get wickets, uh, especially at the start of his spells. So... Um, yeah, I've been impressed with Bjorn and his growth. So hopefully he can continue growing. And hopefully they keep on picking him and playing him in as many games as possible. But guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, please do a couple of things for me as well. Subscribe to the channel. Click that notification bell for all future videos. Also, don't forget to please download the latest issue of Cricket Fanatics Magazine monthly. Every issue is 100% free, straight to your inbox every month. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. And we are busy on the new issue as we speak. I'm busy with it. Pl writers are writing and getting that stuff in and checking, double checking their work and sending it in to me. So we'll be getting that issue out in this week. Hopefully on Wednesday, I'm trying to push for it. It depends how much I can get done in the next couple of days because I have to first wait for the writers to send me the articles before I can actually go in there edit everything, lay it out and all of those type of things. So give me the couple of next few days to do it and I'll try to get it out as soon as possible to you guys. Also, if you want to help us grow and promote South African cricket, please become a Patreon today. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. I'm not going to read that, Lawrence. Really, I'm not going to read that. Smash the like button, comment and share and go to cricketfanaticsbag.com for all your regular updates. Thanks everybody for joining in. Thanks a lot so much for supporting us and asking questions as well it really helps out me out a lot if i missed anything with the player uh, i'm sure matthew enjoyed it as well and thanks to all of you for getting involved and giving me your thoughts on the game that starts at 10 a.m in potchestrom tomorrow to all the guys out there thanks a lot for tuning in and i'll see you guys very very soon with another daily show take care and enjoy the rest of the week